All right, so uh, what we're doing is we're moving uh, on to our next unit, which is all about electricity. And uh, so hopefully earlier this morning you had a look at uh, current and, and all about electrons and the atom and how it moves. And so electrons are the thing that do move. And so what we have is something called electric current, kind of like a water where the movement of electric charges uh, from one place to another, that's called electric current. And uh, well, protons don't move and uh, either the neutrons, but electrons do part of the atom. And uh, when electrons flow in the same direction, they cre create a, a direct current. And so what we have for a formula is that, uh, well, we'll get to this first, is that we have current or charge moving charges go through this you can look at this as a wire and so our charges move through the wire and so uh q is what we call our total charge all right now uh over a certain area so this would be our area of our wire and when those charges move through the wire that is called i which is our current now what we do is we figure out our current. There's a formula. We have I, which is current, and it is in amps or amperes, named after the gentleman who either discovered it or, or amps. All right. So there's our current. And what we're looking at is in current is how much charge goes through per second per unit of time all right so there's our formula you want to find the current you calculate the charge which uh you sh hopefully have done this morning uh at nine o'clock that's what it was all about calculating how many electrons go through uh and the number of them which totals up your charge and then current looks at how much of that charge goes through that wire per second so what they do is they measure over a time a, a cross-sectional slice of wire all right now uh again well there we went through that now example one if uh 60 coulombs of charge are used by a hair dryer in 12 seconds uh calculate the current uh, required by uh, the hand dryer so this is something that you can do at any at your house uh is that every uh appliance uh, will have a rating on it of how much current it uses and so in this case we look here, we have 60 coulombs of charge. So that's our Q value. Of course, this morning you could figure out how many electrons that would take to come up with 60 coulombs of charge. All right, uh, our time here is 12 seconds. So those, again, everything's in standard units here. And what we're looking for is, uh, well, the amount of current. So again, I'm just going to use my formula up here. I equals Q divided by T. All right, so I have I is equal to uh, 60. Well, divided by 12. And sure enough, well, our current, this hair dryer, which uh, takes, well, 60 divided by 12 is 5. And we are talking about amps. So this is a five amp hair dryer, which is quite a bit of charge, kind of powerful, but hair dryers are kind of powerful, believe it or not. All right, uh, what else I got? Oh, if a wire uh, has eight amps of flow through it every minute, uh, how much charge has gone through the wire? All right, so uh, let's see here, we have an I value. This time we know the uh, current, it's eight amps. All right, uh, flows flow through it every minute. All right, so our time, again, minutes is no good to us, even though we have one minute here. I got to convert that to our standard units here, which is 60 seconds. And this time we want to know how much charge. So that is our Q value. All right, so uh, once again, I'm going to use my formula, I is equal to uh, Q divided by T. All right, I'm going to sub my values in. So I have uh, I is 8. Uh, Q, we don't know. And then T here, we got 60 seconds. All right, well, 
hopefully you know where I'm headed with this one. Uh, number equaling a fraction. Well, again, I'm going to create a fraction equaling a fraction. And so I cross multiply. We're now just Q times 1 as well. That's just Q. Uh, and yet, uh, let's see, then we have 8 times 60. I believe that should be 240. And let me see here. Oh, no, 8 times 60. Oh, 480. Let's think 4 times 60. All right, so 8 times 60, we get 480. And our charge is in coulombs. All right, so again, current is how many charges per second go through that wire. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is voltage. Hopefully, these are terms that you've heard in your life, amps and voltage. Uh, a fancy name here is for electric potential difference. Uh, and so what happens is with it, well, it's the amount of energy required for each charge to move from one point to another in an electric field. That's pretty complicated. But here's essentially what has happened is you have a positive charge, right? And what you do is like or like or opposite charges, opposites attract. And so we move a negative charge away from it. And the energy, we would say, is, or we could say this is 50 volts. Now, these two are attracted to each other. So there's energy by pulling them away from each other. It's kind of like pulling an elastic band. Just like if I have a positive charge here, and I move that negative charge out here, well, because, again, it's like an elastic band where you're pulling it farther apart, we have 100 volts. So there's more energy stored up. Now, what you're looking at with voltage is V is equal to delta E, how much energy, per charge. So again, if you look at a wire here, and you have, say, charges flowing through that wire. I'll do three charges here. So there's our charge flowing through the wire. What voltage talks about is, is each charge, whoa, big writing, each charge um, has delta E, so I'm going to use my uh, hashtag there for delta, uh, has delta E worth of energy. So what you're looking at here is current is how many charges, voltage is how powerful each charge is. So that's the difference there. All right, so uh, one, here's the definition here of one volt is the electric potential difference between two points. So that's spreading these two charges apart. If it takes one joule of work, Coulomb, uh, to move one charge from one point to another. And so kind of how your battery works is if batteries, if you look at them closely, and I'm sure some of you have, there's a plus and a minus sign on there. And all the battery does is it has negatives on one side, positives on the other, they're, divi they're divided. And those charges, those negatives, move over to the positive side, and when they do that, they release energy. And that's what makes your items that you use for batteries work. And then when it gets over to the negative side, when they're side by side, they're together, well, there's no energy left. And so a spent battery is essentially all the negatives I've moved all over all completely over to the positive side. And so there's nothing left to uh, nothing left to move and no energy more to be released. And that's what your battery is. Ed. All right. Now, try a couple questions here. Uh, how much energy does a light bulb use if it has 220 coulombs of charge uh, passing through it with a potential difference of 120 volts? All right. So let's break this down. What do we got here? Uh, how much energy does a light bulb use? So we are looking for our delta E. Now it says use if it has 220 coulombs of charge passing through it. That is our Q value. So that is how much charge. All right. Now our potential difference, the voltage, is 120 volts. This is always messes people up. V equals 120 Vs. Well, it's volts or voltage uh, is equal to 120 volts. All right, so I'm going to use my formula here. So I've got my V voltage 
is how much energy per charge. All right, so we've got our delta E divided by delta Q. All right, and so then I look at substituting in. So volts, I know I got 120 volts, which essentially is telling me there's 120 joules per charge. Uh, we're finding delta E, and my Q down here is 220. So there's 220 charges. They each have 120 joules of energy. So, but formula-wise, I got a number equaling a fraction. And so I'm going to create a fraction equaling a fraction. And one's that, what ends up happening here is I have 1 times delta E. Well, that's delta E. And then I'm going to take my 120, because that's how many joules of energy each charge has. I have 220 charges, because that's my coulombs. And I multiply them. And it turns out that total energy that would be used up, uh, let's see here, I multiply those numbers, I get 26,400 joules of energy. So again, this is an example where it tells us how many charges we have, how much energy each charge has, that's your voltage, and then we can figure out how much total energy was used. All right, uh, let's try another one here. So... A 120 volts uh, or 120 volt charges flow through a light bulb operating on an electric current of 0 0.5 amps is used for five minutes. Uh, how much energy does the light bulb use? All right, so let's see what we got here. Uh, 120 volt uh, charges. All right, so that means our charges have 120 joules of energy per each, but that is a nice way of saying we have 120 volts. All right, uh, our light bulb has a current. All right, so that's our I current, 0 0.75, 75 amps. All right, so uh, that is how many charges are going through per second. Now our time here is five minutes, which again is no good to us because I need it in standard units. Five minutes, so I timed 60 seconds, so uh, this thing's running for 300 seconds. And we want to know our uh, delta E. All right, so that's where we're at. Uh, now, again, I got my formula up here. V is equal to uh, delta E uh, over Q. Now, I've got a bit of a problem here. I want to find my delta E. I've got my voltage but I'm missing my charges, how many, how much charge I have. But I do have this other information right here, I and T. Now from uh, just the last part of this, I is equal to Q over T. So I can solve for Q here and then plug it into my formula in blue, which I'm gonna do. So my uh, amps, we got uh, 0 0.75 amps. We do want to know how much charge is going to go through in total because this has been running for 300 seconds. All right, again, a uh, number equaling a fraction, so I'm going to cross multiply here. And so what I end up with is, uh, well, Q times 1 is Q. And then I got uh, 0 0.75 times uh, 300. And so my Q, uh, let's see here, is in coulombs, 0.75. I think it's going to be 200 and something. Let's see, you get the calculator out. 225 coulombs of charge. All right, so now I can go back up and find out how much energy I have because I now have my Q value. So again, I look over, uh, 120 volts. By the way, uh, well, we'll get to that in a second here. Uh, delta E, yeah, that's what we're trying to find out. All right, again, my charge is uh, 225. Lo and behold, fra number equaling a fraction, so I know where I'm going with this. All right, and so when I solve this, I have, uh, well, 1 times delta E is delta E. And then I have 120 times 225. Now I multiply 
those two numbers. And uh, this time I end up with, let's see here, 27,000 joules of energy. And there we go. Now some, uh, we'll get to that in a second. 